Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, I thought I would do a couple things for you all in demonstration to show you what are some of the things that I do to prepare these fig trees for the spring. We actually are in spring officially. Yesterday was the 19th, the first day of spring. Earliest spring in 124 years, they said. Um, and today actually is the 20th and it's oh, 78 degrees outside. It's extremely warm. I'm wearing shorts, short sleeves. It's pretty rare for this to happen here in the Philadelphia area um, so soon. It's only March 20th, like I said. Um, but even if it wasn't this warm, I would still be doing the things that I'm doing right now. I would be doing this uh, because the spring equinox really turns a corner for me. It, this means to me that we are three weeks away from our not our average last frost, but 15 days before our last frost. So our last frost is May 1st, and I've recommended to you guys in other videos that you get your fig trees awake to fully take advantage of your fig season. These trees, these figs, they need a long season, so to fully take advantage of that, I would recommend trying to get them awake about 15 days before your last frost. So for me, it's May 1st, which means I have to wake them up by April 15th. This wake up process here, even though I have them all out here on the patio, this takes about three weeks on average. We need to rehydrate the soil and we also want to increase the soil temperatures. Just having them out here in the sun, especially on a day like this, is really gonna do that. So I watered them all in yesterday when I, I dragged them all out here from underneath our sunroom. You guys have them in the garage. We've talked about in other videos, by the way, is that if they have buds that are swelling or if they have leaves on them and it's before your last frost, you have to protect those buds and those leaves from frost or temperatures below 32 degrees. So if for whatever reason, which I'm sure it's probably very likely, in fact, Saturday, uh, Saturday night, Sunday morning, I think it's gonna be about 31. We could, we could not have a frost, doesn't matter. I'm gonna get the tarps out and I'm gonna lay the tarps over top of these trees. If they are dormant um, and they don't have any swollen buds, they don't have any leaves on them, they can handle 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm not worried about these trees really at all. We're just gonna cover them. It's probably not gonna get down to 20 degrees here from now until May 1st. Um, so we're basically in the spring as the equinox is telling us. And let's do some other things here. So one other thing that I like to do is I get myself a little bucket of a pot of something and I go around and I'll just take the mulch off of the tops of my pots because what I do is before I put them away for storage for good is I, I water them in really well and I mulch them really well. And the reason for that is because I don't want a lot of that water to evaporate in storage. You may have dry storage conditions. Maybe you guys have a dry basement, a dry garage, something like that. Over the length of the winter time, the water is gonna evaporate, the soil is gonna start to dry up. So, uh, that mulch really keeps it in and it allows me to not have to water them in storage. However, now that we are kind of in the growing season, this is basically day one for these trees, is that I want to warm up the soil, as I mentioned, as quickly as possible. Every little bit of heat that we can get really, really helps. Like having them here on this patio, it's amazing. Because all that radiant heat from the bricks, from the pavers, from the wall here, Having them in full sun is really, really important. And also this mulch is cooling down the soil. So I'm gonna collect this mulch because I don't, I don't wanna get rid of it. I have to add it back to my trees. Um, you know, sometime in the summer I can even do that or sometime in the fall before I put them away. So I put them all in this bucket, that's step number one. Now, let's say I wanted to do some pruning. I could, my tree is dormant. I did a little bit of pruning here and there, took off some dead wood. You guys may have some dead wood here. You may have some branches that don't look so great. Maybe you wanna do some last minute rooting. You know, maybe something didn't work out. 
So you can come in here and snip off a branch. You can even stick it in some soil at this time of year. This early, believe it or not, you can stick some branches and just stick them in the soil. Protect them from a frost. Even a light frost really isn't gonna be the end of the world on a lot of these trees if they're dormant. Um, now, if your cutting is starting to put out growth, you don't want that to get hit by a frost, but it's quite unlikely because it's still a bit cool outside. Uh, it will start to activate those processes. I would, have, I would really recommend about 15 days before your average last frost, you can really start direct planting your cuttings into the ground. I have a bed back over here that I've planted a number of fig trees in that I've literally just stuck them into the ground, guys. Um, what I would also recommend, I wanna show you this bed real quick because this is just a really common question that I get. Now, if you have heavy soil, this is my big recommendation. We have really heavy clay here, holds a lot of water. So what I'd recommend is if you guys are having issues with your cuttings rotting, um, try to amend the bed. You know, get some drainage in here, add different amendments like bark, you know, a little bit of compost here, mix all that in, maybe some gypsum. Um, you know, really alleviate and make this a bit airy. Maybe even till this up a bit. Um, I really don't like doing that, but tilling this up and making it nice, light, and airy is gonna help so that if you wanna actually dig them up out of here once they root, it's a lot easier in the, in the fall. As you can really just like fork them out and they come out real easily. Where if the soil is very compacted and heavy like it is with this clay down here, it's gonna be really difficult to dig them up. Um, and you, you're probably not gonna wanna dig them up for about a year or two. So I would recommend amending that soil, amending the bed, if that was something you were gonna do. Another thing that we really have to focus on here, guys, is actually root pruning these trees. I'm not gonna be doing any of that, but this is the time. Your trees are dormant. Think about doing some root pruning. Think about doing some pruning. If they're not dormant, don't do any of that. If you wanna see some videos that I've done on root pruning, you can go back and just do a little search. I have other videos that I've done on root pruning. I'm actually not gonna be doing any root pruning this year. Um, I really don't do a whole lot of it to begin with, but uh, this year we're not doing any. Um, okay, so what else am I doing here? Well, we talked about fertilizer very recently. We talked about fertilizing these things from day one. I talked about the fertilizer that I'm using this year. Um, you wanna get on these applications of fertilizer as soon as they start to put out new growth. Uh, as soon as possible, it should be pretty soluble and fast acting. Uh, either you go with something that's a liquid fertilizer or you should go with something that's organic like uh, Alaska fish fertilizer. That stuff works really quickly, has a lot of nitrogen. That's what you want. Something with a decent amount of nitrogen, something with a decent amount of phosphorus and uh, potassium. Add your micronutrients in here. Um, I would recommend something like a 10, 5, 8 is probably really good for these fig trees. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna be doing is actually doing some up potting. We've got ourselves some trees that need to be put into larger pots. This is a great time to do it. Our trees are actually somewhat dormant. It's not super warm outside. Even if it was super warm outside, it'd be all right. Uh, really doing this from day one of the season is gonna net me the largest tree the healthiest tree I can get by the end of my season. Now, a few words on up potting, okay? Soil, soil, soil is the most important factor and thing that you wanna think about here. You need a soil conditioner. The soil conditioner is really well draining, I guess by definition, and it will condition your soil to become well draining. It will change the drainage of your soil. That's if you're growing in the ground. Let's say you have clay like I do and I add this to my soil. Over time, it's gonna become very well draining, a lot easier to manage and grow in because it's gonna have a lot of air. And all that air that's access, it's being, it's reaching our roots of our plants is gonna pay off like you would not believe. Figs have extremely 
rot prone roots. They are a desert plant, guys, similar to like a cactus. They store a lot of water in their branches and they don't like a lot of water. I don't care where you live. You can pretty much put this in a dry area of wherever you live and your fig tree will do fine and actually will thank you for it. So we're having a really well draining soil. Half of this is pine bark, half of this is compost. It's well aged pine bark. There's no big pieces. It's really well broken down. So there's a mixture of small particles and really small particles in the form of the compost. That's what you want. Okay, so I've just got done pretty much filling this up here in a five gallon size pot. This was a tree that I had in something larger than a one gallon. And I just up potted it into this. If you have a, a really well rooted out tree in a one gallon size pot, and you have soil like this, that's really well draining, you could put that one gallon size pot into any size pot that you want. And I would recommend that you do that because this is a lot of work. If I could take my tree and just stick it into a 20 gallon and that will be the size that it stays in forever, that's a lot less work and it's doable and it's totally fine. Reason being is because I have so much air in my soil and I have to be careful with watering it, I'm probably not going to have to water that tree all that much because there's so much soil around it, right? So that's what I'm doing here. And I also got to make sure that I keep my label. Here's my label right here. I'll put it on the side of the pot. We'll get it to the desired height. Now what's going to happen is that this is probably going to sink a bit for anyone who's done any sort of up potting, you know, that's what's going to happen. So shake it around a bit get the soil to settle. And then we're going to take some amendments here. I have a little bit of ironite left. We're going to add some ironite to this. This is for some micronutrients. I would recommend for a, a five gallon size pot. We're adding in about, about one fourth of a cup. You can mix this in prior if you want. Here we have some lime. I'm just going to put this on top. This is going to give the tree some calcium and magnesium. Those are the two most important micronutrients. You want to cover all your bases, but calcium and magnesium are really important. We're also going to try to neutralize the soil here because this, this just natural potting soil that I use is a little bit acidic. I think you want something around a seven and that's done. This is 100% done. I can take this, put it over there with the other trees before I go. I want to come in here actually, and I'm going to rejuvenate and rejuvenation prune this tree as well. All of the young trees will get this treatment and that's it. There you go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, this is really eye opening. I think for a lot of people, I do this every spring. There's other techniques that I go through like thinning, taking off bravas. We're going to talk about pinching, believe it or not, pretty soon. Um, these are all the things I go through here every single year to uh, ensure myself a successful fig season. Uh, what else I'm going to do is actually take this branch here and just stick it into the pot. You never know. I might get myself another uh, plant that way. All right, guys. We'll talk to everybody soon. I hope you enjoyed this. Check us out on Fig Boss, Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe. I love you guys. We'll see you later. Take care.